Hello and welcome to episode 6. This is going to be a continuation of episode 4 where we built our simple house. So let's go ahead and load that up by going up to file, open, and then find your house file wherever you saved it. And then click open blender file. Now it should look something like this. And if you, if you want to make any last minute edits to it as far as the height of the walls or the roof, go ahead and do that now before you jump in. But we're going to jump in and update this house. We're going to make it a lot more like a real looking house. It's not going to be perfect. We're still not going to get into textures or materials today. I'm really looking forward to learning that myself and I'll teach it to you as soon as I know. However, it is not something that I do know. So we're just going to keep it gray, but we're going to make it nice looking. So the first thing we want to do is add some ground. And one thing about adding the ground is Blender has this nice, you can just click add and go mesh and plane. And we could use that plane as the ground and it would work perfectly. However, if we add it right now, it's going to go to wherever this 3D cursor is. And you see the 3D cursor is not necessarily where we want that ground. So instead of having to add the plane and then move it up to the bottom of the house, we're going to use a trick where we can actually just move that cursor to where exactly where we want it and then add the plane once we know exactly where we want that plane. So the trick is to be in edit mode. And if you're not in edit mode, if you're in object mode, remember that's just tab to switch between them. So hit tab to go to edit mode and make sure you, well, go ahead and select one of the bottom, sorry, not, not left click. You want to right click to select the bottom, one, any one of the four bottom vertices. Uh, go ahead and select one and then hold down shift and press S. And this is the snap to menu. This is this lets you automatically move your cursor to different points. You can see for example cursor to selected, which is what we're going to do. But there's also cursor to center, which is the origin if you look at the axes. Um, there's cursor to grid, cursor to active. We're going to do cursor to selected, which moves that 3D cursor to the vertex that we have selected. So you can see, I'll click it, and right now we have that vertex exactly where we want it. Now we're going to use this quite a bit. So if at any time you happen to left click accidentally, remember that's just Shift S to bring up this menu, and then cursor to selected, making sure you have one of those bottom vertices selected. So now that we have the, the, the 3D cursor exactly on ground level, excuse me, what we're going to do is add mesh plane and there we go we have some ground but it's definitely not big enough so we're gonna hit S to scale and we can try and manually do it or we can just hit the number seven not the numpad but the number seven above the letters on the keyboard if you're emulating a keyboard you might have to hold down shift I'm not exactly sure but if you hit seven it'll do seven times bigger or you can hit backspace eight to go eight times bigger whatever you want to do and you'll notice at the risk of expanding this further you'll notice I'm going to point with this cursor in this bottom left corner where the 3d view header should be now it just says scale x8 y8 z8 and that's what happened when we pressed eight if we hit more numbers like nine or one now it's 891 which is probably a little too big so hit backspace a couple of times and then just hit, say, 7. Seven's a pretty good number. And then hit Enter to select. And now we have some ground to work with. We don't need a ton of ground, depending on where we can put the camera to make it look like we have enough ground. So now that we have enough ground, we're going to change the... We're going to look at what's called a pivot point. Let's say we wanted to change something about the size of the house now. Let's say our house was a little bit too small. We want to make it bigger. So what we do is we would um, select all of the vertices and then hit G or S, probably S, um, to scale it bigger and smaller. But that would make it stick through the plane or come off of the plane, depending on the size. And that's because by default, the pivot point or the center by which it it scales things 
is set to the middle of the geometry. And we're going to change that now by coming down here on the 3D view header, the looks like the this pull down menu right here that has the two circles overlapping changes the pivot center. We're going to change it to the 3D cursor. The default is the median point and that's like the the center point between everything you have selected. So, for example, when we scaled the plane that makes up the ground, it scaled it based on the exact center of that plane because that's all we had selected. So we're going to change this now to the 3D cursor. So anything we change or move now is going to it's going to align or be based on that 3D cursor. And we'll do this again and I'll show you a little bit more why that's important. But now if we wanted to select, for example, uh, let's select all of this house really quick. And I will show you what I mean. Now if I wanted to scale it, it will stay on that plane. That's pretty cool, huh? It doesn't go above it. It doesn't go below it. Let me show you a different view. Scale, and it stays on the plane. That's the importance of the pivot point. And you'll notice this this uh, dotted line coming out from the that bottom corner where the 3D view cursor is. That is the pivot point that it's scaling based off of. So I'm going to hit Escape to cancel that. I like the size of my house. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to make a little overhang for our roof to make it look more like a real roof and less like a pyramid sitting on top of a cube. So the first thing I want to introduce to you guys, and you may have seen this playing around by yourselves, but instead of selecting individual vertices, you can also select edges. And if you come down to the 3D view header, there's these three buttons. This is select vertex on the left, select edge in the middle, and select face. And we'll get to face a little later, but for now we're going to click edge select mode. Now if you'll notice, you can't see the points for the vertices anymore. And if I click somewhere, it'll select in white that vertex. And if I hold down shift and select multiple, then the ones that are selected are orange, and the currently, or the most recently selected one is white. But as long as they're not black, they're selected. So hit A to deselect everything, or maybe hit it a couple of times if nothing was selected to begin with. And what we're going to actually, before we do this, we need to change our pivot point again. And I'll show you why. If we wanted to make this overhang by selecting all of these edges, let me just select these four edges, and we try to extrude them now it would not really work well. We can't really, we'd have to do them one at a time and to ma try and match up those angles it would be a pain. So I'm going to hit escape to get out of that. What we're going to do is we're going to go back to vertex select mode, select the very top point and we're going to do the shift s cursor to selected to move that 3D cursor. And now if you'll notice on the 3D view window we're still in the 3D cursor pivot point. So we just changed our pivot point just by changing where the cursor is. And now we're going to go back to edge select mode. We are going to select these four vertices along the edge of the roof. Let's see if I can get them all. And once they're selected, <coughs> you hit extrude, but it's, but it's still not what we want. Um, any way we try and do it, it's just not working out. So try hitting E to extrude, and there's this really new cool option now. You can hit S, and S scales each part selected uniformly according to the pivot point. And so as we pull it out, you can see it's scaling each side directly out from the pivot point instead of all together. And this is called the uniform... Let me see the name really quick. It's called the Scaling Uniformity. So that's once you hit Extrude. <clears throat> once you hit the E key to Extrude, you hit S to make it uniform from the pivot point. So come out just a little bit to make your house overhang. And then hit Enter or left click to set it. And now your house looks much more like a house just by doing that simple take.
But we're not going to stop there. We have a lot more to do to make this looking like a real house. So the next thing you're going to want to do is click on the face select, which is one of those three buttons where you can change vertices, edge select, or face select. And you'll notice every edge, sorry, every face now has a little black square in it. And that little black square tells you where the center of the edge is. So go ahead and find the positive x direction. And that will be if you look at the, on the bottom left of your 3D view window, if you look at the z, y, and x, that will be the direction where the x comes out of where the three meet. So you can move it around and see it's going to be on mine, this side, because that's where you can also hit control space to turn on, oh, that's in object mode. So if you switch to object mode, you can hit control space to turn on the 3D manipulator. And where the red arrow points out, that's the positive x direction. Just like if it were the green arrow pointing out, that's the positive y direction. And the z arrow is gives the positive z direction. OK. So hit back to edit mode. <clears throat> and select the three faces on the positive x direction. There's two on the roof. So one, two, and then one that makes up the wall. And we're going to extrude this out now along the x-axis. So hit extrude E and hit X to lock it to the x-axis. And we're going to come out, but we're going to make it precise. We're going to come out exactly two blender units. Now if you'll remember, our cube to begin with was one blender unit to start. So hitting two will essentially double that in size. So hit 2 and you'll notice again on the bottom left along this header where all of these options used to be it now says 2 along global X and you can hit enter and now we have effectively doubled the size of the house. But we have a problem. We have some extra edges inside that we can get rid of now because we don't need that inside part of the roof here. So go ahead to edge select. You can zoom in a little if you need to and find these inner, well, just one actually that we don't need. Find this top inner edge, right click to select it. If you can't see it, make sure that the occlude geometry button or the limit selection to visible, make sure that is off. Yeah, you want it off so you can see through things. Select that edge and then hit X or delete and say edges. If you hit vertices, it'll mess some things up. Just hit edges because we just want to delete that edge. So select it, hit X, edges. One more time. Right click to select, X, edge. Okay. Now, I think we can delete this other edge in here too. So I'm going to delete that one. And that way our house is much more uniform. Don't delete too many edges or you might lose some faces, but I think now we're good to go with the rest of it. The next thing we want to do is we want to make some doors and windows for this house. So you can see if we wanted to make a door or window, we need more vertices. There's just nothing to manipulate in there. So the way to take a face and get more vertices out of it is called subdividing. And that means we take one face and we turn it into multiple faces just by making cuts in it. So go to face select and I'll show you how that's done. Face select, select all of the six faces now that make up the four walls of your house by holding down shift and right clicking on them. And once you have all those selected, then go to the specials menu. Remember, this is where merge is. Hit W to bring up the specials menu. We used a merge before. We're not going to use merge now. That would kind of make this look like a retarded house. We're going to go to subdivide. So click subdivide, and you'll see the default is just a couple of cuts. We need a lot more to get some, to get some really good um, windows and doors in there. Now we're gonna. We want ten different sections let's say so come over to the left side if you don't have this left menu hit T to toggle it on and off so 
you should see after you click subdivide this number of cuts menu on the left appears and you can click there and change it to nine why nine because nine cuts gives us ten sections just like if you cut something once there's two parts now if you cut something twice there's three parts that way if you cut something nine times there's ten parts so hit nine press enter and now each side is made up of a ten on the on the small size it's ten by ten on the long size it's ten by twenty because we doubled the original length so now what you want to do is come in and I'll show you this once but I'll leave you to do the rest still on face select come in select a couple of faces and this is actually easier if you turn the limit selection to visible or the occlude geometry if you turn that on so that you can only see the one also if you find a perfect view by on the numpad pressing one three um, control one or control three to find a different face and you may have to dolly a little bit um, that's con holding down control and using the scroll wheel so once you find that perfect view and you turn on occlude geometry it's really easy to just select a few of these to make a window and then you're going to want to not move them in because if you hit grab and try and move them it pulls all the other ones so don't move them but extrude them inward now hit E we're not going to use the mouse at all on this one hit E to extrude hit X to lock it in the X direction and press 0 0.1 that should be plenty now if that comes outward then hit backspace and say negative minus 0 0.1 and that'll go inward and that's what you want depending on the side you're on the direction will change sometimes you'll want 0 0.1 sometimes you'll want negative 0 0.1 you'll just have to look at it and see so that's hit enter and that'll lock it in and that's that is one window and if you hit tab to go to object mode it looks a lot more like a window and if you applied materials and such it would look even more so so I'm gonna leave it to you to go ahead and do that to make windows and doors and I'll load up my final one so you can see what it kind of should look like this is my final and if you hit tab you have something like that and you can set up your camera correctly to render it F12 is the quickie render and you might have something like that depending on your light source your light position and your camera so that's making your house all nice and pretty next time hopefully we can jump into some materials and start learning about materials and textures so stay tuned and I will see you guys next time